Well, Wallace chose to come to this part of the world because he was interested in what we now call today biogeography, and that is the distribution of animals in geographic space. And at the time, he was finding out that we needed to know more about the regions of the Malay Archipelago. And so he proposed to the Royal Geographic Society that he would like to take a trip to the Malay Archipelago to study the wildlife here and the distribution of it. Well, the results that Wallace discovered were profound. He, he, he found, um, related to this biogeography, that first of all, that the distribution of animals seemed to be divided by this particular line that occurred between Celebes, which is now known as Sulawesi and Borneo, and between Bali and Lombok. And to the uh, eastern side of that line, we find more Australian fauna, and to the western side of that line, we find more Asiatic fauna. Wallace was largely overshadowed by Darwin because what Darwin did in, in pre presenting his theory of natural selection was he had meticulously amassed all of this information and data to support his theory, whereas Wallace had more quickly come to it. Wallace was a specimen collector. He collected wildlife, he collected plants, and he would send these back to England. So he saw great variation in natural life. And so he could come to that conclusion very quickly that, that there wasn't these static forms of life, that they were gradually changing. And so he quickly came to this notion of, of evolution and then discovered that natural selection would be the mechanism for it. But Darwin's the one who really nailed it down and proved it in his work in The Origin of Species. Imagine him walking, bending down in the forest floor, looking for the beetles and having to keep an eye on tigers that were known to roam in this part of the forest.